I will say that Jennifer Marufo let me know she would not be able to be here today. Um, there was short staff at the library. She needs to cover the clothes of the library. So she will not be here today. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, do we have any revisions to the agenda for today's meeting? I'd like to add discussion about the state of the website. Oh, um, I put it on the agenda. It's, yeah, C under I put it on the agenda. business. Continue. Um, continue okay. business. See. Didn't see that on the one that was emailed to us. So. Uh, any other revisions? Uh, if not, um, Edwards moves to approve the revised agenda. Thank you. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have two sets of minutes here July 23rd and August 13th. Uh, do we? Yes. Sorry, just when I was putting it together, there is a red penny. Oh, I noticed that. I figured that out, and I will figure that out later. I wonder if you were trying to highlight something about the weed. My computer got some dead. I don't know why it's one word. Are there any revisions or comments other than the red weed? I found like one small word. Oh, I, see. I can talk to you about it afterwards. Oh, you can tell me right now if you want which one's it on. It's in the uh, August 13th. Under public comments. And it's in Steve Prestash's address. It was brought and it's just been to Mr. To Mr. Prestash's attention because the word two was missing. I don't need to get that. Thank you, Okay. Now we need to get that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice. Um, are there any other revisions or uh, does somebody have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the minutes uh, both for July 23rd of 2024 and August 13th of 2024. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any public comment on items not on the agenda? Then from Steve, anyone online? No. Okay, hearing none, we will move on to housekeeping items. The baby doe Tabor wedding dress in Leadville. Honestly, I just got all the information I could, and I just clicked on one of the links that we can email stewards to now. <coughs> that as well, the link information. Because it was the way to donate and it was kind of through Lake County. So I just kind of wanted to give a little more detail on the way it does itself and the district of it. So I just included a little extra just so you guys could get excited and tell everybody to go see it. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, let's see. Are we going to have some representation there, Stuart? Are you? No, they really don't need that. They don't need I'm, Okay. I'm, uh, Handing out some flyers and whatnot. And obviously, I'm going to go. I hope we all do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if we have the flyers for our workshop, if you have some, I do. hang some, uh, hang some out. I have one. Too. Then, yeah. Um, okay, excellent. Yeah, well, this is going to be a great event. And we're super, we're, we're lucky to bring in the dress here. And I hope everybody appreciates the significance of it. It, it hasn't been in Leadville since 1936 or something. So, uh, yeah, it's impressive that they're, they were willing to bring it here, given that in the article, it makes it sound like it has been and might still be in somewhat rough shape. It took some cajoling. Yeah, <laughs> nicely done, Stuart. <laughs> Great. That is an exciting thing. Um, oh, yeah, any other housekeeping items, or is that it? That was it for me. Okay. Um, historic walking tour. We have the licensing agreement review. Yeah, I sent that to everybody. I really appreciate the comments. They were all great. And uh, pending any other thoughts or comments today, I will compile all that and get it to the city administrator. She'll share it with the city attorney. Um, we'll go back to 
the paper with a couple of comments. I don't think there are a lot, and I think I've talked to him about everything. It should be okay. Um, and then we'll have to go before city council and we'll and we'll start doing this. So I do appreciate your reviews. They were good. So you got everything you needed to be able to send it to legal? Well, I'll just take the agreement and type up the comments that were given to me. And I will send that all to Lori. Okay. And then she'll work with the city attorney to make sure it's okay. Okay. And then it would go back to, I'm assuming, the paper to make sure that they're in agreement with our changes? Yes. Okay. Just trying to get the quote. Uh, so I will mention that um, I've had St. George's calling. They're extremely interested in making sure that St. George's is on the tour. So we're starting to gather a tiny bit of momentum before we're even doing it. So I was, I was very glad about that. Um, and I think that's really about it, which is still moving ahead. Okay. Uh, any uh, comments on that or any sort of suggestions that occurred to people since uh, we got this via email? No. All right. Uh, if not, then that sounds good, Stuart. Is the okay. plan going forward? Um, I look forward, hopefully, to having something soon. But I know that these sorts of reviews take always longer than you think they will. It's all right. <laughs> That's kind of why I threw it on the agenda. I knew he had emailed it to you guys, but I wanted to make sure that everyone on the commission had had a chance. Mm -hmm. to put in their two cents before he sent it out to legal. So I didn't think it would be too much discussion on it, but just want to make sure everybody got a chance. So. Yeah, thank you, Laura. Uh, okay, then moving on to the tax credit workshop. Um, Stuart and Jennifer design, I think Jennifer did the bulk of the design for this uh, little flyer that we have. Yeah, I would say uh, bulk as in 100%. You know, yeah, I thought uh, that, would, that would be most of it. That's it, I can see. Um, yeah, so the flyer's been made. We'll start to put it up around town. I had a bunch of copies made. Uh, I'll go to community coffee tomorrow and hand that out. I put my first ever Facebook post up on, um, I've avoided Facebook like the plague and I put it up on um, what's happening in Leadville and it's already getting a little bit of comments here and there. Joey's made a few responses to it. You want to put it out there on little bitching mode? <laughs> uh, we did have one request that said, like, this is great, are we going to do this for commercial buildings? Mm -hmm. So I just replied back and Joey also did that that's in the works mm -hmm. or they can just come and talk to us. So yeah. and people are seeing it and reading it. Um, and, and the way both of us worded that is, you know, this this seminar will be geared toward residential tax credits, but we're certainly will be here and could answer questions on commercial. Yeah, so yeah. the presentation will be retail oriented, yeah. so everybody can be included, but made sure that they understand the emphasis. Yeah, you might handle that back. Oh well, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Uh, the press release. Donna's working on that now, so we should have a press release by the middle of the week that'll go out to the local paper and all local community papers like the Chief Times papers. Mm -hmm. that, I, is, that is in the works. Okay, good. And I sent an email requesting to be put on the paper's calendar and upcoming events. So hopefully that will be on this week. Um, I also have it on the city calendar, so it should be seen, the city council should see it and other people can, and it will also goes to the newspaper. And at 6.07 this morning, I received my first RSMP, so obviously it's out there. The word is getting out because I already have two RSVPs for the workshop. That's great. And I did I did do an announcement on it at City Council last week. So everyone is familiar with what we're doing and when it's going to happen and what it's going to include. Okay. Um great. And thank you, especially to Jennifer for that design. I passed it on to uh Sarah Kappel from History Colorado at the sort of Office of uh, whatever they call it, the tax credit preservation section. Um, and she said it looked great, thanked us for that. Um, and I'll plan to check in with her again one week before the workshop, just to sort of make sure everything is on track, see if she needs anything, et cetera. And I'm still waiting to hear back on the uh, our, uh, interpreter. Oh. I've asked and 
Okay. Yeah, I will send it. I'm going to send an email out to include everybody here on it, as well as just my local connections with the flyer and a reminder about it. Oh, and if you guys are so willing to take that and just share it out to your group of friends. It just, mm -hmm. I think that's probably the easiest way to get the word out. So yeah. I'll do that next week sometime. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. This room almost got the book that night. The board where it started at 6 p.m. City Council was going to use this room to show up for for something. And the board were on top of that. So that City Council I think got involved um, since that meeting, our meeting, which you go until 7 p.m. Good. I gave them out. <laughs> Does, anybody, <laughs> Does anybody know if you can do these after the fact? The tax credits. The tax credits, you can, can't you? I, I don't. You should yeah, go to a bookshop. Yeah, you can. <laughs> there's a, there's a limit great. for how long. Yeah, it, the sooner the better after, but um, as I think Steve experienced, they're sometimes extremely slow in um, approving the sort of pre application. And so it effectively becomes a kind of post talk kind of thing where you show the before and after and they just kind of approve it after. Is that what happened in your case, Steve? I still haven't gotten <laughs> it. Yeah, and when I did it, I actually got my official approval in the mail like the day before I was going to our tax preparer person. And I had been just sort of totally in, uh, you know, out of the loop as to what was happening with it. No one had gotten in touch with me. And then it just sort of appeared in the mail, you know, like sometime in March, six months after I had submitted it or something. They will make a big deal about wanting the application before you start the work. Mm -hmm. but then it's gray area because it takes them so long to do anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, it's best if you can at least do the preparatory work. And we can also ask Sarah and oh, have her have a great platform for with the questions and maybe make it known that people are frustrated by, by the fact that it's unclear right. and that they're so slow, et cetera. Yeah, um, well, you do have to, one thing you have to do ahead of time is document the yeah. current condition before you do any work. Um, so that's, that requires that you understand the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take pictures and you, um, yeah, at least have pictures of the, the things that you're going to be changing gotcha. so that they can do it before or after. Um, but yeah, we should start collecting some some questions, although I'm sure that we'll have plenty from uh, um, whoever attends as well. Okay. Um, anything else on tax credit workshop that we need to be thinking about or questions? Okay. Um, hearing nothing, then moving on to the planning department. Uh, City Council monthly report. Okay, uh, I'll just give uh, <laughs> highlights as it relates to uh, the historic preservation commission's work. Um, this planning department report was, I think, the longest. This was five pages of bullet point, um, just potential projects, current projects, etc. So a lot going on with the planning realm, but um, I'll try to just keep it um, pointed towards you know, see the items. It's worth noting. Um, like in your packet, you'll see on our pre application, uh, we have a lot of pre application meetings coming in right now. Um, and we are guiding a lot of applicants uh, when, I guess, as appropriate towards the work session option um, because they're, you know, some of these projects do have um, like really critical questions that are kind of make or break for projects. And um, so I am gearing the commission to um, gearing the applicants towards getting in front of the commission as quickly as possible for a work session to get those questions asked before they draw up plans and proceed with formal public hearings. Uh, I will note though that um, you know, like Alex will be going full time next week, but sometimes we are trying to get these work sessions in front of you as quickly as possible. Sometimes that may be the next week, and we may not have time to draft and fill the memo, although we would really like to if we had more time. So we'll, we'll take that as it comes, but just know that you may have some more sessions coming in front of you where we'd like to have a more detailed memo, but we may just be getting that scheduled the week before or something. So, um, so okay. a, lot, a lot of work sessions, yes. Will all of these listed under COA and pre-application, will, will those be headed to us in, in some form, do you think? We are, we're expecting, yes, 
Um, but it's always a, it always depends on the applicant who tends to, to fully submit for a COA. Okay, thanks. Okay, and then um, in terms of active applications, so at your, let's see, uh, two, I think the first, the last meeting, sorry, the first meeting in October, um, we will have the uh, Inglebach House, which is the house across the street um, that is coming in. You have already had a work session on that. That will be coming in for a um, COA. Um, and we have an active application right now. I think for the most part, that's consistent with the plans that were presented in the work session. Um, so I think they have responded to the HPC's comments. So I'm optimistic this will this will be um, a project. It would be interesting, but I think that this would be a successful successful project. And then we also have the Manhattan Building, um, who's coming in for their formal COA for window replacement. You've had a recent work session on that. Uh, those are our um, two active COAs. We have a lot of work sessions, a lot of work sessions, and a few more COAs coming down the line. It'll be a very busy. Um, next three months in terms of our current outlook on, on commission agendas with work sessions and COAs. And then in terms of um, process COAs, so the Bachman Residence um, ADU uh, COA that was approved at City Council um, on July 16th, and then uh, we did approve, let's see, administratively um, site replacement for the Cornerstone Church that's uh, not a sort of building in Borden Batten siding with a metal wings cover, I believe. Yeah. So there's still some enforcement related items out there um, that are that are pending that honestly just um, lack of staff time getting to those items. For follow-up is kind of why they're, why they're lingering. Um, there are some things that are there for we just haven't got to. I think I'm just gonna pause there and see if there are any questions. I had a question similar but unrelated to anything specific here, but I noticed the um, shipping container structure being built right by freight. Um, and it looks like they're getting all the siding and all the finishing touches on, and it doesn't really look that period to me. Is it being built as it was submitted? So far, what I'm seeing has been it's been what they what we approved. Okay. I mean, so far it is. I mean, well, in the attempt, and the intention wasn't to make it period looking, but to make it not stand out exactly. against a period looking building. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's back that call. I mean, it looks great. Right. And, and a lot of make sure it didn't look like a container. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I, at first, it didn't even have a front facing door. We we made sure that their door was to the street. And I mean, there was some, some questionable things in the beginning. And how many? We had two work sessions mm -hmm. and then a. Yeah, yeah, I think maybe the, the, the roof and the like sort of foundation area. Yeah. And several it was things. chaos. It yeah. was, and, and it took us several work sessions to get them to make it look like. It belonged. I mean, it, it, right there by the historic district, we didn't want them to try to go period specific, but we needed it to look like it could fit in. And, and they have finally, I think, I've been watching them since the, I mean, those containers got their bluers can be for how long, and I just cringe every time. So we, I think we've all been kind of watching it to see how it, and so far, I, I think they have met everything that we asked. I, do you guys see something that I'm missing being on the commission during that COA? Is there a is there a final review like there was for the famous building? Absolutely. Yes. Where we'll get to go through and see the recommendation recommendations made and what they actually did. The staff will. So yes, the right. building department prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy um, for so a project like that would require a new certificate of occupancy. Mm -hmm. Um, that was certificate of completion. Um, the planning department approval will be required before the commission CO. So. And you'll be able to sign up. You'll have to sign up on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we we so we take the plans uh, that were approved by or some, I guess signed off by the city for the issuance of a building permit. Um, because that can incorporate any changes that were approved after the HPC administration if they had minor tweaks. Uh, we take those plans out to the site and we compare the uh, when we inspect every, you know, everything on the exterior before we sign off. Great. 
Thank you. They actually proposed to modify the plans, I think, during construction and they remove that front door facing the street. And we said, you know, this is an important feature. We would, you would have to go back in front of HPC for that. Um, so they they did not, <laughs> they actually did not do that. That's also like to the, to the crash. You have to be careful. So that's why it's really important, you know, for staff to during that process to, to have these checkpoints, you know, prior issuance of building permit, prior issuance of certificate of occupancy, those are our main checkpoints. Um, so that we can make sure that if they do propose to change their plans after HPC or after city council, rather, this time before building permit, that we can check that. I have to do what's called an architect statement of compliance. Um, and that so that they can state if they if they change anything, so we don't have to go through and review every single little detail of the plans again. And then prior to issuance of the certificate of occupancy, we do the inspection. Thank you. Okay. I think I've mentioned this before, but I have tasked the city attorney with. Drafting that ordinance that would have P and Z and HPC being the decision makers going to the city council as a consent agenda. Um, so just stay tuned for that. Uh, anything else uh, from the report, Chapin? Just trying to skim this. The, the comprehensive planning project, oh, yeah. a huge project over the next 12 to 14 months. Uh, we are going to city council next week to um, to with a resolution to enter into that agreement um, with community builders and the county government. Um, if you are interested in being involved in the comprehensive planning, we are developing project teams right now. And so one of the teams we're trying to fill is um, we're trying to get approximately approximately 30 to 40 ambassadors and engagement um, engagement team members for the community. Um, and we're in a period of making nominations. Uh, so if, uh, you know, if anyone has any questions about what comprehensive planning is, why it's important, um, how historic preservation uh, would relate to comprehensive planning, I'd be happy to have you speak with you offline and answer those questions. Um, but let me know if you're interested in being on any of those project teams. Right now we are trying to fulfill ambassador uh, slash it's ambassador slash engagement we're looking for about 40 members. I nominate Stuart Franco. <laughs> <laughs> I second <laughs> <laughs> You said he would do it. Yeah, I'd do it. I'd like to. Okay. I'm actually a little interested in myself, so I'm not I think that's good. Let me know if you have any questions before we update. Mm -hmm. Chair Spillman, can I go backwards for a second? Yes, let's go back there. Um, and talking about the tax credit workshop, mm -hmm. um, you guys have mentioned getting it in our city newsletter. And I sent the email. They're obviously still going through some transitions upstairs. And Sarah didn't know who was going to be doing it. And she got back with me this morning and said that Bree, the new Brianna, the admin assistant will be doing it as well as Sarah this month. They're going to kind of do it together. <laughs> so I was actually me to send me her the blurb. I don't think I said that properly, but I need to get her the blurb for the newsletter. For the newsletter, and I wanted to make sure that it was just basically you want the facts of the the date, time, all that kind of stuff, and maybe even mention that we will have a commercial one in the future or how. how does anybody want to give me direction on what you want that blurb to say? Would there be any reason not just to give them a flyer? No, I can't think of a reason. That little small square would cover it actually fit right into the. So I might, if when you email that to me, I will see if they can't put that into the. Is that okay with you? Or how, how do you guys want me to do it? I'm asking you. No, I could email it to you. And then I can just give it to her to put that flyer in within the newsletter. Sure. Perfect. That's what I'll do then. That's okay. something good there, Are we? Excellent. Thank you, Lori. Um, let's see. Uh, any, before we move on from the City Council monthly report, any more questions for Chapin about that? Um, anything in there? Not. And thank you, Chapin, for his report. Um, 
it's always great to see everything that's going on. Um, and also great to hear about all those checkpoints that you have for making sure people actually follow what we do um, here. Um, okay, then moving on to new and continued business uh, discussion about the transition, a potential transition conservation district. All right. And I should have known this before I started, but I can log in and pull up the map. Um, unless you want, to talk, you want to pull up the historic preservation map on to share screen or the group on your computer. I can do it. It's but you have a share drive? I have it in a it's just our website. As you can see, just not the HPCs. Oh, right. I can show you for the website, which um so I think that we had um maybe after a meeting a few meetings ago, a few of the commissioners and I had talked about we have a lighter agenda for an upcoming meeting, which happened to be this one, um, putting on the agenda a discussion of um, this idea of a trans, it could be called a transfer, transportation uh, <laughs> district or conservation district. The idea is that, you know, right, and this is, this be like a longer term goal, but right now, you know, we're in the process of sur surveying our buildings to understand what we have and understand not just what we have, but the differences between buildings, the differences between areas of, of, of the, the historic district. There's the potential after that um, to then develop design standards, as we've talked about, that are custom for Leadville, that are based on the Secretary of Interior standards, but are more unique and, easy, frankly, easier to work with than the Secretary of Interior standards. And um, there is an opportunity for us to call out those differences between the areas of town. So for example, 8th and 9th Street and Bankers Row being different <laughs> than um, perhaps um, <coughs> down, like the southeast portion of town, um, you know, within the older, or this central, uh, originally commercial area of town. So, you know, not just residential versus commercial, but, um, you know, ornamentation, detail, all those things. So potentially we may want you to find different character areas of our historic district. What we may also want to do is give ourselves an area where we don't go from essentially um, have a stark contrast between very regulated with our, with maybe our new design standards, our custom design standards, to outside the, the historic district being, being practically unregulated in terms of design standards. Um, if you go to applications and documents, and then it's the um, it's the fourth one down. Keep going down. Uh, no, the fifth or sixth one down. Historic conservation map. Okay, so right now, the, the orange dotted line is our historic district boundary, and as we all know, as part of the surveying process, we've asked the state, you know, to let them know that we may want to. You can get some information about redefining our historic district boundary. So that's also a possibility. But I mean, either way, we will ultimately end up with, if, if, if even for a boundary change, with, with, with a boundary that has design standards um, after we get through our survey project. So the question is do we want to start thinking about, again, as a long term goal after surveying, after design standards, or maybe before design standards, do, do we want to? Um, have a boundary, maybe it's a block on the perimeter, maybe it's inside our district, maybe it's outside our district, where we have not as strict standards as the core of our historic district, but we have some standards. So ultimately, when projects come in over the you know, next 10 and 20 years and beyond, we don't have, um, you know, um, you know, Victorian structures right next to you know, three-story glass boxes and giving ourselves a, a transition area where maybe you have gable roofs, maybe you have um, rectangular building forms, um, but you're not going into the le level of details on windows um, and maybe, you know, ornamentation and all those things. And you can allow some more flexibility, but it is some guidelines and not as many guidelines. So it's a quick introduction. Um, and then maybe we can just open that up for discussion. I had comment, Chief, and there's a few areas like east of Hazel up by the by freight. 
Yeah. But there's still a lot of Victorians that are outside the district. Right. So I think in those areas, it'd really be important to do something like this. There's other areas where, you know, it's a school building built in the 50s where maybe it's not as critical right now. I don't know if we would want to make it apply in some areas and not others. It might be easier just to go block outside. But I do think in some of these areas where there is a nice collection of Victorians that aren't in the district, that we do something to sort of protect the character of those blocks. And maybe, maybe you know, before we even get to a transition area, maybe the state's guidance is, oh, you, okay, you need to, uh, based on your surveys, you need to redefine your boundary. Yeah. But maybe that conversation with the state is, okay, so we are, you know, we are interested in doing that, but we're also interested in having a conservation district. So what, you know, what comes first? Do we, do we redefine the boundary to fully encompass, uh, fully encompass the, you know, structures like you were just mentioning and then have a conservation district within that? Or do we consider some of those um, structures that are outside of our current district, and if the state says, "Yeah, we would encourage you to expand your district," do we then consider that being our our transition area? And so, you know, essentially, we have two boundaries um, that have that have different standards that apply. So basically, it's a it's a buffer zone. Is that exactly. what I'm understanding? Yes, exactly. It's a buffer zone between the core, the district, the landmark district. And those that don't have regulation. Right. And we need more, you know, we, we're not there yet because we need more information we have right. in the process. Um, but, but yeah, exactly. It's I, I think my main concern is that it, that it's going to take us a while to get through these projects that we have on our, you know, teed up right now and funded right now. Um, it's sad that I, because I feel like we need to do it twice. I feel like it would be beneficial to have that transition zone now, not now, but. It, with, within a, a decent amount of time rather than wait. But I do feel like after we do our historic context and these next round of surveys, that we're going to want to, we will have the, the ammo and the information we need to expand that. And then once we expand it, I can still see us needing that buffer zone around it even after we've expanded it. So I, it is, I know that sounds like extra work because it sounds like we might need something sooner rather than later and because it might take us three to five years to expand that oh, yeah longer probably right and i'm <laughs> very nervous about leaving your you know that buffer zone exposed with no regulations you know before we get that change the boundaries change so my head is thinking and that's again just my head okay. joe you had something i have a couple of comments if i may um there's going to be a lot of hesitation from city council to expand our district in any way, shape, or form, and we need to be aware of that. There is a lot of, there is the idea that any type of historic preservation review increases the cost of homeownership and increases the cost of home repair. I don't agree with that as a true statement, but there is a perception out there that that's the case and we're going to have to fight that. There are two logical, if you look at the south side of town, sorry, the west side of town, that maps the city pretty well, and it doesn't require a tremendous amount of change. If you'll notice it, it actually maps pretty strongly all the way down to the very end of all of the historic streets, and then also down to the end of 8th, 9th, and 8th and 9th streets as well. As far as there was any historic development, mm -hmm. we do have an opportunity the easy one is just mm -hmm. to expand two blocks south down to Monroe Street, uh, and then follow twenty-four, follow the highway right there by the pointer. That corner mm -hmm. would seem to be an essential add mm -hmm. because that's the gateway into downtown Leadville and Harrison Avenue. Mm -hmm. The second one is a pretty natural one if you go back to the center of the map. It's very easy to document historic structures on the east side up to approximately Alder Street, north of, uh, yeah, north of, sorry, east of Alder Street, there are still a few historic structures, but it became a much heavier mining area, mm -hmm. lots of spills, piles, uh, lots of mines, but up to Alder, so from, uh, I'll get you to go up a little bit there, 
from like 12. In a perfect world, we take 12th Street at the city line and go to Alder Street and run all the way across to the city line where it joins at 5th Street uh, and then come down to Monroe and then come back down. That's going to be a much harder ask of <laughs> city council. <laughs> that would cover the vast majority of the vulnerable areas in Leadville. Uh, and be a pretty easy distinction to make. Yeah. Yeah. And then would you have in mind including uh, open space? Uh, I would absolutely, because that yeah. is going to be developer sort of space. Coming and, all the way around that corner. And, and so that's, the, that's the only reason for having almost like past a, the high Like a reverse mountain. L shape. Exactly. Exactly. And the reason for that is because that will be developed. And we saw that come through mm -hmm. for the Justice Center that's not going to happen now. Yeah. But when it's developed, it would be a shame to have <laughs> heavy commercial or heavy industrial come in right there. We don't want a big truck depot right there if we can help it as the gateway to Harrison Avenue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think it might be smart to look at it in two different asks. Here's what we consider to be an essential inclusion, and that would be the entrance to Harrison Avenue business corridor. Mm -hmm. And as a secondary ask, it would be nice to be able to protect uh, several well-documented historic properties, and that that natural dividing line is approximately all their street, all the way across. Do you think City Council would think differently if it was the state and the and the state and national level that they were requesting and and wanting us to change this? Do you think that would not be fair? To be perfectly honest with you, I think it would be essential to see the city adopt it. It would have to that. It would have to be that would almost have to come from the state direction. And I think it would be an easy ask and, and an understandable ask for the end of Harrison Avenue. But expanding that purview in a residential area, it, it, it's almost going to have to be that by the state. Guys. Say, Joey, Even with like it being nothing close to like normal historic district regulations, right. just sort of like orientation of the house of the front entrance or a conservation district like what that yeah like. yeah yeah just sort of a loose i'm a hundred percent for it i find it yeah. extremely difficult to get it uh, i passed hey, trust really? your reading of so uh, i mean <laughs> I, I, I i'm absolutely the advocate for it but yeah. we have a lot of headwinds right now All with right. city council and we've done a good job of of moving that forward with the consent agenda but there have also been a few things recently that made me think that that's going to be a big ask. And so I would separate into two. Here's what we consider essential. Right. And that one's an easy one to explain to everybody because there are Victorian houses that run all the way around that corner. Yeah. Uh, right on the highway. And the other side is absolutely developable space and it will be developed in the near future. Um, being able to control that so that it's something that is beneficial to the, the downtown core is important. The other one is important from a historic preservation standpoint, um, but we'll see a little bit of pushback because of the perception that it makes uh, home ownership more expensive. Can you? Or uh, home maintenance more expensive. Is there any way you can say what like the split is on the city council, like 50 50, 60 30, or is that something that? <laughs> I'd say it's probably pretty close to 50 50, and I think it goes beyond that. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I think it would be a tough ask. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot of education to do. Getting our consent agenda moving forward for planning and zoning after HPC is going to be a big part of that. Yeah, that's going to be step one um, all these things. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I don't think anybody is hard and fast against what we're doing, but there's a lot of education that needs to happen. Wow, okay. So we just need to be aware of that. I think if we went and asked for all of it at one time and asked for all of it the same way, it would be a hard one. There's too much. And that's what we don't... We don't want to do that if we can help it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe we split it into here's what we consider essential, and here's what we would like to see from a preservation standpoint, from historic city of Leadville standpoint. And it would be so easy to document the housing on that last couple of blocks. And you see how it jogs already anyway. But that was the original, uh, it was the Irish part of town. Uh, so lots of small miners' cabins up there, lots of log cabins still up there that have been converted into, into residential houses now. They're still standing and still important and very easy to document. It really makes no sense that the line goes down Hazel because you can walk down it and look to the east and it's all Victorians. And Again, this was done in 1961. And it makes, well, yeah, and state of repair in 1961 was much worse than it is now. 
Um, but nope, yeah, you can see it, it maps. Yeah, the the west side of town maps the historic area really, really well. So we're really only looking at two areas, which makes our job much easier. And of course, the bright yellow line you guys are aware is the city line, the city lines. But again, this is down the road. And as, as Jason said, we have to get our surveys back, even if historical kinds of the historic context would be helpful. And and we can't, I mean, we can't even really talk to the state or the National Park Service about expanding it until we get that information as well. So it but I, I think we could go to the city council and ask for a transition area, an area that requires more of you for that that essential entry in uh, the Harris family. And Chapin, is that something that would have to be sort of written into city code or would this be like a, a design guideline sort of appendix or appendage to uh I need to see if is there if, if we are and we definitely need to have some code modifications. Yeah yeah um I guess the first I was thinking about whether or not the city code defines the boundary of the historic district. I don't think that it does. Um, I think it defines maybe at best best case scenario like the boundaries of the Harrison Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, and it does it one yeah was it one block on yeah. the side I think I think it gives a boundary for that but I don't think it gives a, a written description of the historic district boundary. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah we were, we were like setting aside any conversation about expanding the, the historic district if we were to implement a um, a transition overlay district um, then yes that would require uh, an amendment to city code it would it, it would be an overlay district just like we cre the creation of a new overlay district okay. um, so it would be it would be an additional overlay district to the historic overlay district we already have may i ask another question yeah is it something that we could include or ask to be included in the comprehensive plan even before we did anything with code because we're that's that is really a future zoning map could we bring that into the discussion we'd like to see this as a is a transitional area adjacent to our national historic district totally as yeah. part of the comprehensive plan so moving forward at least for the next 10 years that's at least front of mind as you're looking at the zoning map for the city center yeah totally in other words, in other words the comprehensive plan um, could establish that as a priority. I, I didn't know that. You could simply say this should be invested, in, this should be considered, this should be analyzed. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that we could approach and actually include in the comprehensive plan before we could ever do any code amendments or anything else. That's so we can get a little bit ahead of it. Yeah. yeah. And that process is going to happen over the next 12 months. Yeah. But then they also hear about it more. And by the time we bring it to them, it's, it's been talked about. It's in the plan. It's in the plan. Yeah. Well, and, and bringing it to them and saying this has been discussed by planning and zoning and the Historic Preservation Commission. These are two areas that we've highlighted as being uh, as being important. Mm -hmm. Makes it much easier to include it in that, in that future zoning map. Absolutely. <laughs> Yes, Stuart. A couple quick things. One is that there is a discrepancy in the code and in the downtown corridor survey about where the district ends on the south end. So, in one spot it says the 300 block, another says the 200 block, which still doesn't no. include the Union Pacific site that Joey's talking about. And in my opinion, that would be the first and most important mm -hmm. location to make sure right. it's brought in so that some big giant building doesn't go in there that, that doesn't fit right. Harrison. So I 100% I agree with what Joey's saying. And you're, you're talking about the Community Justice Center site? Yeah. Yeah. So right, right there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Right. And honestly, this, this area over here is, I don't know why it's not included. I mean, well, Chestnut and Second were B Street back yeah. in the day. So yeah, it's kind of left off a whole corner down there. But you're All talking about this area over here. here and over here. And that's interesting because they did. They they literally mm -hmm. excluded probably the oldest, most historic parts of the like, yeah. one corner. Mm -hmm. That's where the whole town started. Is that whole area? Yeah. Right well, yeah. and on the Monroe side, right. that side is great. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. I think in terms of the question of which one would supersede, I don't right now. We have Harrison Avenue design guidelines that are adopted that extend 
if that is what you're saying. But they don't include where the Justice Center was going to go. <laughs> But Harris, yeah, Harris Avenue side guidelines should only go to the boundary of the historic district. Right. Which is 7th yeah. Street. Right. Harrison. Yeah, and like the, the, old like just, they, the, just the guidelines the should not extend outside of the historic district. So okay. did our comments for the Justice Center for that site come to us because it was adjacent yes. to the National Historic District? Yes. Section 106. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the, the second part of that was if we look at some of those other critical areas that Joey referenced, if we went to city council and said, we'd like to make this a transition zone with the knowledge that when and if the official district changes to include those, that then we want to come back and move the boundary again, just to get that yeah. out there. And, and that's why I was saying it would take two. It would take, you know, we would have a preliminary buffer zone. And then once we expanded the, our boundaries, then we would have to push that transition zone out further. And maybe that's how we frame that ask. Maybe we say we are going to approach the, we're going to approach the government to expand our national historic district. So we would like to turn what we're asking for into a transitional district. Is it so we yeah. I don't, maybe that makes it an easier ask. I don't know. Does that, Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What are um any other thoughts? Are people generally in, in favor of pursuing this or are there any dissenting opinion? So the ultimate goal would be to expand the historic district officially. Uh, officially, all... depending on what the surveys return. Right, it's possible right, right. that in some places it might shrink depending on, you know. What's actually there? What's happened since 1961? So that would involve national park service. No longer exists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get the national park service. We yeah. have to officially do that. That would be the yeah. end result. Yeah. And they're the ones who recommended it to us. To to re they really want us to consider expanding that because it was such a quick. I mean, we were one of the first ten mm -hmm. that were even given an actual historic yeah. district. Done like with that. no surveys or anything. So they, they base this off of nothing. If you look at the state, they have no backup sure. for what they base this off of. So we just need to make sure that we have surveys and everything to back what we're wanting. And, and the National Park Service is wanting to see those surveys and say, okay, we think you should expand it to here. I mean, they have a voice and they would like to give us what they think is, yeah. is that's but, for us. I'm gonna break it down like this. I would say the goal of having a transition slash conservation district would be that when you're out in the community, whether you're a, a, a visitor or a resident, um, you're walking down the street, you don't have stark contrast between between you know historic Victorian, uh, for example, and um, and you know, the big glass box, um, you know, ultra ultra modern. That would, that would be the goal of that new overlay district. The goal of Modifying our current boundary would be to protect existing historic structures that need to be protected. Right. Yeah. 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 Probably the best example of this that I've seen, and Chapin's probably familiar with, is in Breckenridge. They have mm -hmm. like five separately defined uh, transition or conservation districts right along the rim of their core. And each one is defined slightly differently depending on where it is, like along the river is different from then the hill, like going up from town. Mm -hmm. um, and they even include, you know, because they've had more investment, um, you know, areas that aren't even really historic in nature, the way that you're talking about, Joey, just to sort of regulate some of Just the look well. of some of the new stuff that's going in like new residential development that can be seen from town and the, um, reason, those, and the reason those buffer areas were added was because they did lose so much of their mm -hmm. historic yeah. inventory yeah and so, so that was the only way they could figure out how to protect it yeah and so we could even you know if we get advanced at some point, could even define differently, you know, like that mm -hmm. corridor coming into town could have somewhat different regulations because you're going to want different stuff along the highway, or at least people well, are going to want to do different kind of stuff along the highway than, for example, like the residential area up on the, the east side. That's great. Um, and then we could even, 
you know, I city council probably wouldn't go for this, but sort of in our dream of dreams, you know, you could even include like some of the just like the 60s developments like off the west side um, where there would be like then a separate conservation district there mm -hmm. that basically just says like you can't put up a three-story glass box right next to the historic district. You can otherwise, you know, do basically what you want, but you need to use like have it oriented to the road with a front door facing the street and like a gable roof and that yeah. would be it or whatever. You're just keeping yeah. out the super, super modern and stuff that you're not really seeing that being built right now. Yeah, but yeah. And I, that's so probably not a consideration. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that'd be, that'd be another way to say it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, our infill guidelines are um, you know, are based on the Secretary of Interior standards. Um, I mean, I would, I would even say be a hair less than I mean, yeah, than the Secretary of Interior standards could be. Oh, sorry, be slightly less restrictive than our infill guidelines. And just so you guys are aware, can you can you see the bottom of that map again? County planning and zoning right now is has been talking about for a while taking the north side of the highway going out of town. So adjacent to, well, between the highway and Elm Street right there. And, you know, that's all zoned commercial now. And they're actually considering in the comprehensive plan to revert that back to, because so few of them have been converted from residential to true commercial other than the, the distribution center for the uh, for the liquor down there. Uh, the re so much of that is still residential, that they're considering changing that zoning so that the commercial stays on the uh, the county side there, yes, uh, where it is now. So what we're talking about doing would work very well with what the county is considering as well. Mm -hmm. And they're doing that specifically to help preserve housing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, that, so that no more housing gets lost to commercial use on that side of the street. Yeah. Because most of that is within all city limits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all inside the city limits. All of that is. So when you say that the, the county, county was planning on rezoning, um, do you mean that in the do you mean in like the comprehensive plan in the future land use map? Future land use map. So just talk talking about uh, when we when we do this joint comprehensive plan, um, working with the city to talk about those designated land uses in that interface. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to do anything down. we can to to keep any more of those houses that are right there on the highway yeah. uh, from being turned into commercial or being torn down. Right. That uh, includes Springtown too, or? No, that's in the county. That's, that's, that's a little too far down. This is just going down the approximately Luna Street there. What about where all the, the what, what about where all the Boonday rocks are? Is that county? That's, that's, county, that's, county. that's county as well. Yeah, that's the potential future mill site. Um, but yeah, that that little sliver right there coming in right. would, would seem to be a pretty straightforward ask, and I really would strongly suggest that we two tier that. All right. So, do you think we should, or do, do people in general think that we should try to go forward with something like this sooner rather than later? I'd say absolutely. The sooner the better. I think. Just get on people's radar to. I, do you think we should let Chapin see through the current amendment that would that changes up sort of the way that city council does things where our recommendations are essentially final and they only review it if they want to? Should we see that through first and then pursue this? Yeah, I think the, the my, so I guess staff suggestion on this would be the progression is, you know, you made some we may have some big code amendments through last year that mm -hmm. give the commission purview over any kind of modifications in the historic district. Now we're seeing the volume of those, mod of those applications come through. The, the consent agenda ordinance kind of responds to that. Okay, now we're seeing that volume of those ordinances that we made. So let's let's streamline this process. Mm -hmm. And so we're building all that confidence, I think, uh, both yeah. the commission and you know, and council and staff. And then so I think. Going into going into 2025, I think we're re really going to be at a point where we're like, okay, let's zoom out a bit. Let's look at what all of our goals are. Because right now the city is doing the strategic planning, 
So we're just going to identify goals for the next three years and then comprehensive planning, which is identifying goals for 10 years out in par partnership with the county, especially when, when like the Joey's talking about, we do have these interfaces between city and county. So I think that really focusing that towards the strategic plan and the comprehensive plan are um, is, a, is a way to get this identified as a priority to, you know, to, to I guess, um, to analyze and potentially have adopted like late 2025 or, or 2026. Is there a particularly egregious example that we can photograph of something that's built, something that's exactly what we don't want that we can maybe prep city council with that here's an example of what we're trying to avoid. And just to let you guys know, we're going to start talking and working on this so that they kind of have it in the back of their heads that every single bank on Harris Avenue. <laughs> yeah, that's well, and I can think of a broad one of the reasons, you know, before Chapin got here, we were having a really hard time doing anything as a commission simply because we our hands were tied. We did not have jurisdiction, purview, whatever you want to call it, over a garage being put in someone's backyard. And was it 9th Street, 8th Street, with a square nice. metal the box. The box, a garage that should never have, you know, we just didn't have any purview over that. So that was our example we used to get purview is, is we were not going to be able to stop a garage coming in that towers over the house because we didn't have any regulations and we didn't have any jurisdiction over that. So now that we got that and it has increased the workload for Chapin just by having everybody in the historic district have to come to us or at least you know, get a COA even if it could be administrative or approved. But it seems like the square garages that are supposedly behind a historic house coming up over the top of it is a perfect example of, of the things that we didn't, you know, that we, we were very nervous as a commission that a million of these things, development was just starting in Leadville to kick in again. And it was so frightening to think that we didn't have any jurisdiction over stuff like that. So it's kind of the same thing that we're looking at here is you just don't want the big glass box next to a Victorian. I think you're getting a steward is right on that boundary, right? right. It's an example of, uh, of you know historic Victorian on one side and more, existing glass box. Yeah, okay, this is what we're trying to we're prevent, we're trying to provide some separation symbolic. Yeah. Can you think of any examples that we have in town like that? I mean, uh, um, this phone, yeah, what is it might not be the best example, but a community justice center mm -hmm. is an example. That is true. That application was was not subject to our standards and or any standards. I mean, and, and, and quite literally, that, that wasn't a tongue-in-cheek comment. That was a very serious comment. Most of these were done in the 70s and 80s. But, right. But we but, have jurisdiction over those now. Well, they demolished one. Right. We could control what we not. True. But we can't east of Hazel. Well, and that's where, I mean, there are several subdivisions being proposed on the near east side, like several different ones. Now, all of those are going to be potentially that kind of juxtaposition between historic and right. new. But those would be further not much out than our one block buffer zone we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. They will be. And I can't think of one right now other than the box. Uh and, and, and even that's in the okay. so, it's close to the edge, but it's still inside the historic district. Yeah, it's just an idea. It's a good point. And I, mean, I think that, that you know that is absolutely one of the considered like here in front of city council. This is that's exactly one of the points that you would want to make. So someone say, okay, well, what's the problem? We don't have you know, do we have this out there right now? So we need to answer that question. But even if the answer was no, we don't have that answer, and we could show projects like potential projects that would come forward. Um, but then, you know, we would need to ex ex kind of sh maybe show some theoretical examples of like something like this could go right here next to something like this. So well, it did uh, happen before we could predict. Mm -hmm. right. Good. Or well, we, we could just fold examples. We could, yeah. Get photos from Breckenridge and that. <laughs> but your point about the mentioning like the subdivisions going up, um, it reminds me that in some dream future perfect world, you know, then we could have even potentially like gradations where then there's like the one that goes to Alder. And then beyond that, it's super loose, but just like use natural materials and blend in with the trees kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's um, probably important to talk about what the market is driving right now. Yeah. And um, I think we all understand some of you could definitely speak to this better than I could, but 
you know, I think the observation is that the market is really driving some like, you know, and a lot of this product of our lot sizes, right? The smaller, mm -hmm. smaller, simple structures that respond to the lot size, uh, you know, that they're, they're narrow frontages with, and, you know, more uh, yeah. deep um, in size. Um, and traditional roof forms for the most part, um, rectangular building forms, but that is just because the, that is what the, the property owners and for the builders proposed and, and it, it can easily get approved. But if someone came in with, um, you know, big glass box, for example, uh, there's nothing right now to, to deny it. And so we don't have, remember, we have a lot of examples of what we, what we really, really don't want. Um, but you know that so that's the important that's the really important part to explain is that even if it's not happening right now, it could happen. And in planning, our job is to anticipate the things that might be coming down the line, you know, and get ready for it. Any further questions or comments? No, it's good discussion, I think. Because I think in we need to continue the discussion and as we go. But a lot of things do need to happen first. We need to get some surveys back. We need to see, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But, but yeah, so we'll plan to pursue sort of as part of the comprehensive planning process going into next year. Yes. yes. That's a great idea. Okay. Then what you mentioned, Lori, about the surveys, if we have nothing further on this, <laughs> goes this into review of Metcalf surveys if available. Well, obviously we don't have anything to go on that. <laughs> I did, however, talk yeah. to Jimmy this morning and she, she emailed me back and said that she was uh they had some mapping edits last week and so it kind of knocked them a few days back, but they do anticipate having them to Chapin and I by the end of this week. So Chapin and I just discussed just sending them right out to you as soon as we get them and then we can discuss it at our next meeting if we have time because the next meeting is September 10th. Okay, yeah, and so, we'll have a, we have a work session then and we have to get done by five, right? Yes, um, to have the, okay. the workshop from five to seven. So the work session will be from four to five. Yes. And um, that's why we're hoping that we can get them by the end of this week and give you guys a good week or so to look at them and maybe even emails any comments back um and then chapin's gonna have to have his time to review it anyway and then technically they're due to the state by the mid september 15th right. yeah i think what we'll try to do is i'll try to make sure everybody has a copy of like my one page email to the state for my last review of the uh, kind of like the proof set in the summer, so the, i don't know it's 20 something structures i think and in just making sure, you know, getting extra eyes on making sure for these 100 structures that those initial comments that I had given were, were applied to the other, whatever these seven or eight structures. Right. When will those uh, little brochures be ready? Will it be some to hand out soon? There's mm -hmm. little tax credit brochures. Oh, I have them right now. Well, you do have some I could hand out? Well, I only brought one. Are we, the rest are at my house. So. Oh, well, no, just in, in a few days, stop by and get a few. Yeah. I have a few people I could hand them out to. Sure. Okay. Right. And I don't, I don't think um, our next, our meeting, next meeting in September would be sep September 24th. <laughs> and I feel like that's a little too late. I mean, we, the 15th isn't a, a drop dead date with the CLG grant, but they would like it around them and I just feel like waiting till the 24th is a little too long. Yeah. So, well, hopefully if we get the if you you're able to get them out within the next week, maybe we can send some thoughts via email so that then we don't we can have maybe a, a very brief like five ish minute right. discussion of them on the 10th. Um just if there are any thoughts, any concerns. And anything that People didn't get to send. To yeah, you. have Chapin give us a high level overview of what he thinks and okay. that sort of thing. Wait, any other questions about the surveys? Okay, then moving on to the website updates review. Well, I took a look at our website and all the pages in it, and I, there are some things that are out of date that need to be updated. Um, and I made some 
specific suggestions for three of the pages, the commissioner's page, the tax incentives page, and the, I think it's the, the main page really. And when you print out the PDF, it comes out with our, with our logo at the top, but this is the content that's on um, the main page. And anyway, so, you know, the commissioner's page, doesn't list Jennifer. It says that Joe is still the interim chair. So I, things on those three specific pages, I, you know, I crossed out things in red that were incorrect and then put blue underlining for things that needed to be added. Uh, with ta tax incentives page, I thought that the first sentence really didn't belong on that page at all and could be moved to the you know, where it talks about the structure of the HPC, um, which is that third third page there. And then um, I thought that there ought to be link, well, I highlighted in yellow places where I thought there should be links to other documents. So the tax incentives, you ought to have a link to the state's tax page. I think there already is a link, but um, this, streamlines it a little bit, then um, we say that there are certain documents um, on the documents page, which aren't there. Like um, there's no there's no application for a COA, which I think is needs to be there. Um, there's nothing, well, we ought to have a link directly from the main page to the map of the National um, Historic Landmark District. We ought to we ought to have the code changes that were approved put on the documents and, and uh, page. I think. And um, anyway, so oh, uh, we've done a link back to the commission page there, where it says the commission is made up of five people, and then a link to the application. To be on the HPC. So um, I moved some things around, I streamlined some things, um, but I think that we probably ought to discuss it and say, you know, do you like these ideas and then how can we make them happen? I like all of them. Thank you for doing it. Yep, agreed. And the only other comment, and I think you already said it. For me, probably the most important thing to be readily available is the map, because I think that's the first thing people are going to say, does this apply to me? And I think it's too hard to find right now. Lori, who is Sarah Bushman? She is the new deputy city clerk. And you said she's the one that knows how to... She's the update. only one on the new website that can... Um, you said Andrew can now? Yeah, Andrew um, is now trained on editing the, the website just as of recently. So, um, so he, he is able. I, I, these were afforded to Andrew to work on, but it's essentially Andrew has not had time. The new website came on this this past summer, and then so we we're waiting for all that to get settled. We, we switched to a new platform, um, but then Andrew hasn't had time. We, we, it, this is one of many updates that have been made to, made to planning department. Website pages, you know, not you know, not just a circulation commission, but planning zoning, et cetera. Um, we just we just have that time. No, I was yeah. going to see if it if we thought it was worth them coming to one of our meetings to discuss any of this. But and Andrew will be at our next meeting. Oh. He's going to be here. He's going to be transitioning to do agendas and minutes, and he was going to be here today, but he forgot it was today, and that was too much. I no worries. So but he'll be here at next week's meeting to try to start shadowing. Yeah. Well, and something else that I think looks really bad is we've got these spaces for recent and upcoming meetings that have all these places for minutes, agendas, agenda packets, and there's nothing there. Yeah, we totally agree. Websites, parties of work. We have we have a staff capacity issue right now, so it's it's identified. It needs tons of work. So we've got to get to it. Yeah, and I. I just want to remind us, we did a uh, vote on a new website less a year ago at this time, uh, which I still have and can send uh, all of that information.
if we want to just put that. I'll frequently ask questions, all that. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, I, and <laughs> unfortunately, I had absolutely no say when we got this new website. So I didn't even get a say of, wait, as a matter of fact, I'm still having trouble with the street department side of the website, the Excel Energy all summer long, they give us weekly updates on a Friday before next week to tell you what's going to be closed and I can't even get those out there. Mm -hmm. So it's been it's been a frustrating time, but I think, and at one point, Coursera was the only one who could do anything on the new website. So it's nice to know that Andrew's now there too. So it just, they came in while it was already starting to be, and it's, I didn't feel bad for them in that transition. It's just kind of yeah, yeah. But, I will well, take it right at the end of the whole planning part of the website. Exactly. We'll take it really from a from a development um, review and process perspective. One of the really important things for me is getting getting our packets on the website at the same time. At the same time, you receive the email mm -hmm. for yeah. the packet for both planning zone commission and circle yeah. that 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 packet is available online and stays online. And it's available for people to go back and refer to afterwards. That's a huge part of uh, the development review process. This is not there right now. Mm -hmm. But it's we're making steps. steps. This at least looks better than what was there before. We have to make sure we stay on top of it because it is a PLC requirement. You're right, Joey. And so, so it, like, just to let you know, this is how we're planning to address this. So Andrew's time is slowing down with the streets. He spent three quarters streets this year. Um, so his time with streets is slowing down. Um, and then I'm going to council to ask for the streets department to have their own administrative staff member. Huh. So after my, my plan, my request is that after Andrew's done with street stuff, you know, as we get to the October moratorium, um, and after October, um, he's 100% planning administrative support and that, that never that never changes he doesn't have to go back in the streets next year that's that's my request to council um so we're we're just trying to get get through these last few months using using them partially and then we can have them fully and then basically fully you know fully um, replace uh with glory time yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Okay. Uh, anything else about website? Um, but as you that... mentioned, he has already forwarded this to Andrew, so he can at least start working on this. Okay. Um, all right. Then uh, any public comment on items not on the agenda? Um, well, we need to see press that one thirty one East Third Street. Um, and I think we've agreed you could make comments about things that were on the agenda. Uh, sure, I guess. Um, um uh, the uh, expanding the um, uh, historic district, I, I guess the, is the word proxy by having these buffer zones. Um, it seems to make sense on the north and east side. Um, I don't understand why we're obsessed with, and I'm not trying to be abusive here, but this is the first word that comes to mind. Well, I'm doing it to the entrance of the city um, because we really need uh, more restaurants. And, you know, I, I, I don't see somebody putting some kind of mill there. So when we talk about these things, we keep talking about the, the big glass box thing, which is the extreme end of that. And Joey's brought up the uh, industrial thing being there, which is another extreme end. Um, I agree we shouldn't have the industrial thing there, but I would like to see some restaurants. And I know this is totally uh, against what all of you want, but I'd like to see a McDonald's thing that would I'd be high, a high capacity place because for residents like me, it's a nice place to go. You can have coffee, something to eat in the morning, and then off you go. And I think so. I think we need to have not limit this to, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think there has to be more thought on, on limiting that corner, that, that, that entrance way. But again, I think that northeast section with those Victorian houses. Mm -hmm. There should be maybe an extension of the historic district. Thank you, Frank. Can I make a clarification? Sure. Uh, just to address your comments, 
I don't think anything that we would do as a transition district would limit what could go there. So a restaurants could absolutely go there. I think you would only instruct what they look like from the street so that they're not jarringly different. Uh, but certainly, uh, there's a hope for a McDonald's now. Right? Yeah. Uh, not right. in the not in that in in the business, business. But, so. but, but, restaurant, <laughs> but restaurants in general, I think, would be completely encouraged. It's only the way they would look as you come into it that you know we don't get a strawberry fields like you when you're coming back up from Denver and big, big, bright little box immediately adjacent to uh, to our sign. <laughs> designating our historic district so but but no more restaurants 100 percent i don't think anybody would you would can't get master david anywhere mm -hmm. what's that you can't get master david anywhere no, that's true <laughs> no you can't oh, Quincy's Quincy's out right. <laughs> but anyway good point, good point. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you steve um anything else can i go back to the tax credits sure. If someone comes up and says, I, I want tax credits because I'm putting on a new roof, we then say, have you submitted a COA? I mean, is that going to be included as part of this? We want to get the COA. I mean, because that's something we can approve. Like, so we would want to get the, the COA done first. Yeah. So I mean, if you, would, you would want for them to go for the project to the, to the state and their tax credit application, knowing that they have their what we call entitlements and their permits. Uh, so yeah, we want to get that done first. So we should have information on COAs if they don't have one, right? Like say, say that we're done. We'd have have to have information on COAs if they don't have one, on how to apply for one of those, like the information at the tax credit workshop. Oh right, yeah, I mean, yes, yeah. We would basically be in, uh, our general application form and. And you know, if they were to pay that online, how to pay that fee anymore. So we'd have that information. If they didn't have a COA, they this is, you need to apply for this as well, right? Yeah, we do have that information. Yeah, yeah. And I assume you'll you'll be staying for through the tax credit workshop, Chapin, or at least be here yeah, for yes, part of it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you'll probably be able to answer questions regarding that we're going to install bulletproof glass <laughs> Get, like the pope mobile or something i liked your transformation <laughs> term we should call it the transformation <laughs> let me just tell you about this like you're taping it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll pin everything on you. Um, okay, anything else? Um, nope. Open house. <laughs> yeah. It's not about anything in open house. Even if we have an open house, we're not involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>